John Egan is another jockey who won't be returning to Hong Kong in a hurry. He's a wanted man there, charged with taking a bribe of 20,000 Hong Kong dollars from a racehorse owner. He denies it, but he's also refusing to go back to Hong Kong to face the charge. We understand that the Chinese police have written to the jockey club, expressing their concern that John Egan continues to be licensed to ride in Britain. Uh, our judgment is that this is not a matter of such seriousness that the integrity of racing in this country is threatened. That is why he continues to ride in this country. And he's refusing to go back to answer a charge of, of corruption, and you think that that's OK to I'm, continue I'm, licensing I'm, him? I'm not taking a view on whether... But you should. You're the regulator, Mr Foster. No, I'm taking a view on whether his activity is a threat to the integrity of racing in this country. And you don't think it is? I don't believe it to be. In your opinion, should Kieran Fallon be riding in, in the UK at the moment? On the strengths of the Hong Kong report, I would say not. John Egan? No. On the strength of the reports as I understand them to be. I don't believe so. I believe that where there's any connection with any crime, organised or otherwise, of the, uh, and the information is as strong as it is, um, I believe as a protective measure, the Jockey Club would be wise not to license such people. The alleged links between British jockeys and suspected Chinese criminals are not confined to Hong Kong. In Britain, the Manchester police have been investigating the infiltration of racing by Chinese triads, as this secret document reveals. The Jockey Club know all about it, but when they were asked by the police for just £3,000 to assist investigations in Hong Kong, they said they couldn't help. Kieran Fallon, here riding the Queen's horse, Right Approach, has declined to discuss these issues with Panorama. We can reveal that since leaving Hong Kong, the Jockey Club have observed Fallon mixing with suspected Chinese criminals on a British racecourse. Fine. Andy Davis, BBC Panorama. Are you a fit and proper person to be wearing the Queen's colours on the British race course? Because effectively you were stopped from racing in Hong Kong after being seen associating with a Chinese gangster. Isn't that correct? You also been associating with Chinese criminals in Britain. Why don't you want to address this guy on my face? Why don't you want to address these issues, Mr. Fallon? Kieran Fallon is on the verge of winning his fifth title as Britain's champion jockey. He claims he's never knowingly mixed with triad gangsters. Last month, the Jockey Club and Panorama went face to face in the High Court. At issue, the Jockey Club's secret files. And a final bid to keep evidence in this program hidden. Like all these things, it's um, you know, in the laps of the gods, as they say. Almost literally. After a two-day hearing, Mr Justice Gray ruled that it was in the public interest that these documents were revealed. It has been made clear on behalf of the BBC that this case is not solely that the Jockey Club failed to take effective action, but also that if effective action cannot be taken, more effective means must be found to preserve the integrity of racing. The BBC had won. For Roger Buffum, it was a vindication of his decision to blow the whistle on racing. The Jockey Club now has a new head of security. He's Major General Jeremy Phipps, a former head of the SAS. We met him with his PR man, John Maxey. To, uh, to do the we're interview, not filming now, are we? Jeremy Phipps has already made his mark at the Jockey Club with a series of dawn raids on a number of trainers' yards. It was part of a random testing program designed to identify the performance-related drug EPO. This is an area where the Jockey Club has been hugely successful. Doping has virtually been eliminated from the sport. The stewards of the club have introduced a new integrity review committee and they're lobbying the government to give them wider powers to deal with the threat of crime. 
the turf's hierarchy say they've always acted in the best interests of the sport and that they remain robust and vigilant regulators under the direction of their new head of security. Does the jockey club have the resolve, the backbone, to regulate the sport properly? Yes. Of course, remember, we haven't got any statutory power. That's, that you're saying do. it has? Yes. I do that's, believe it has got the backbone, yes. Certainly. That's, that's not what you really think, is it? It most certainly is. Why do you say that? Because that's not what you told Roger Buffham when you met him recently in London. Earlier this year, General Phipps presented a very different perspective on the Jockey Club. When he discovered that Roger Buffham was in touch with Panorama, he asked him to come to London for a chat. Anticipating that the former SAS man might put pressure on Buffham not to blow the whistle on racing's corruption, we secretly recorded the meeting. In the course of the hour-long conversation, there weren't any threats. There were, however, some remarkable admissions about the jockey club's lame response to the threat of corruption. A response, though, which General Phipps pointed out was improving. It didn't take long for the subject of Graham Bradley's admissions in court to come up in the conversation. This transcript is a dynamite. Yeah, they are. I mean, Brad's gone and shot his fucking mouth off. Good. We wrote to Brad, and we wrote to Brad's sister. Did anyone say anything? Yeah. Too much. I mean, it's pretty horrendous stuff, isn't it? I mean, and all exactly what you said, I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm not but but no, no one wants to do anything about it, though. This is the problem I got. Well, on that now. Well, I hope you make sure they do. I had David Andre in my office this afternoon. Mm. And I said, why the fuck have we not done anything about this yeah. before? And apart from the odd warning, nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. No. Don't you think that's reprehensible? And, and, and it's, not, it's not just, it is, yes. It is actually the backbone that's not terribly strong. You told him that uh, the, the backbone of the jockey club isn't terribly strong. I don't believe that was the case. Those, those are your exact words. Are they? I'm sorry, I dispute well, let, that. But well, let, let, me, let me refresh your memory, because these are your comments, which uh, are transcribed word, from, word for word from that uh, meeting, which was uh, recorded. Yeah. Uh, and your words are, it is actually the backbone that is not terribly strong. And that came from Mr. Buffum. That was from your meeting with Roger Buffum on the 30th of April yeah. in London. Yeah. How can the jockey club run this sport effectively if they haven't got the stomach, the backbone to regulate the sport? I do believe they have got the backbone. But you said, why were you saying to Roger Buffham that it's not terribly strong? I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I disagree with what that was, that transcript, I, I really do. Do you still think members of the jockey club are, and I quote you, fucking ignorant? No, I didn't say that. I you did say that. that. Oh. You did say that. Roger Buffham, uh, he starts talking about the conflict of interest. And you reply, and also you've got to think about jockey club members as well. Roger Buffum says, the club members. And you reply, they're fucking ignorant. And Roger Buffum says, who get Jeremy, indignant. Jeremy, do, you think, do you think they're fucking Jeremy, ignorant? I'm going to have one word with you, because actually we, can, also, ask, we can deal with you, this. Right. And no, it, and I'm not sorry, John, these are legitimate questions. They are, and you can ask this them. This is a matter of Andy, public you can, interest. Andy, and I you, think by all means, ask stop. them in one minute. No, no, I just want one no, word no. with Jeremy. Well, exactly the same questions. I, uh, in, John. In one minute, Andy. No. What do you think about your system of licensing, General Fitz? We'll just go. I'll come back in a minute. Because you said your system of licensing is crap. General Phipps had been pulled up at the first hurdle, but the withdrawal was to be only temporary. It appeared that his PR director wanted to gently point out to him that he must have had a perfectly good reason to be quite so critical of the jockey club. Can I ask you what uh, your public relations officer just said to you? Well, he reminded me uh, why I met Roger Buffham at the Tapsters in London, Victoria. I arranged to meet Roger in order to draw out from Roger exactly what he had done to try and identify if indeed he was writing a book, if indeed he had been contacted by BBC and by newspapers. In order to draw, in order to draw everything out from him, 